everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Hey everybody, welcome back out to Giga Texas. It's Wednesday, the 6th of March, 2024. And as you look around the skies, you can see there's low clouds, some mist, and the vis visibility is not as great as I would normally like to have it, but it is enough to fly. So I was able to keep the drone at a lower altitude and there's still plenty to see today. Now, before I get into a few highlighted items in the intro, just wanna mention that uh, it looks like Starship's third launch is going to happen sometime next week. In fact, it looks like the 14th of March, which is next Thursday, is the target date right now. So because of that, I'm gonna be heading down next week unless something changes, and I'll be spending the week down at Starbase to cover that launch. And while I'm gone, you're gonna get a chance to uh, see Giga Texas on a continual basis because Jeff Roberts and also Brad Sloan are gonna to continue to fly the drone out here. So you shouldn't be able to uh, miss any of the big action going on. Now, speaking of today, a few things that I want to highlight. First, on the west side, the superchargers look to be at least operational enough that there are two Cybertrucks supercharging in the stalls. The stalls have also had some of the paint marks uh, for the parking locations made. And with the Cybertruck sitting there, this gives you maybe an idea of how the superchargers are going to be operational because a lot of people have questioned the configuration of the superchargers. So hopefully this helps. Going on to the south end where the building extension is continuing to grow larger, we see more and more steel being erected on the southwest corner and it's connecting onto the old original exterior wall. And on the east side, we see more steel being erected on that new section where the perimeter grade beam was created and that is continuing towards the four large tanks. In addition to that, we see a lot more of the glass has been installed on the south side and crews today are getting ready to install even more. You can get a good chance to see how they do that with this image. That large uh, yellow item with the suction cups is what they use to pick up the glass panels. Also, I was able to take a look at one of the open crates and it's confirmed that there's only three glass panels in each crate. And that's because of the immense weight of about 12,000 pounds per ma uh, panel. So that makes a lot of sense. Moving over to the northeast corner of casting, the biggest news is that section where they've removed the concrete. They've been doing some boreholes and some water and vacuum uh, work in that area to try to prepare it for the excavation work and by using this method it's a way of avoiding damage in the subterranean items that are already there. The last area I just want to highlight is on the south end of the crash test facility. We see that that uh, kind of that underground uh, concrete tank has got a lining put in it and they're putting a rebar around it so it looks like there's going to be a concrete apron around this open pit and the pit looks like it can contain some sort of liquid, most likely water. Uh, one of the things that you will see is the number of cyber trucks and model wise on the east side, the southeast side coming out of end of line for the cyber trucks, the east side end of line for the model wise, and of course the west side outbound lot is absolutely brimming with both model wise and cyber trucks with trucks picking them up and taking them off site about as fast as they are arriving from the factory. So a lot of great signs with production. Otherwise, plenty more to see in the video today. As always, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care. If you would like to support my efforts, please consider using these links, which will be in the video description. If you are interested in Tesla products, you can help yourself and support me by using my referral code. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons on my YouTube video as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas.
On this foggy and low cloud day, let's start over on the west side at the Boring Company site where crews continue to do preparation to get ready to begin the tunneling operation. We'll start on this section here where the dirt spoils will be deposited by the belt conveyor system. And eventually there'll be a 90 degree turn on this uh, belt cassette and dumping into that uh, concrete section. It looks like it's getting some sort of, uh, I don't know, a uh, liner put into it. This is a good view of the uh, part of the conveyor system that's been installed on the beams and it extends over to the Proof Rock 3 tunnel boring machine, that uh, white cylindrical item into that pit. And then the other items underneath the black uh, tarps are part of that entire system and will be added once the tunneling has progressed a certain amount into the soil. We can also get a good view of the scale of the Proof Rock 3 drill head by the worker. He's going to climb down into the pit and gives you a real close view of how tall a normal size human is next to that Proof Rock 3. So it is a lot larger than it may appear from just these images. Uh, additional work on those yellow cables or hoses. Those are part of the cooling system for what I understand. The orange and yellow kind of funnel device in the uh, right hand side is part of the ventilation system that will be installed and help ensure that the crews inside the tunnel boring machine during the tunneling have enough uh, uh, breathable atmosphere while that tunnel gets longer and longer. So still no tunneling, but uh, we'll continue to monitor that. There is a ton of activity on the outbound lot today, both for the Model Ys and for the Cyber Trucks, and also the transport trucks that are picking up all the new vehicles and uh, taking them off to the distribution sites around uh, Austin, including the railhead in Taylor, Texas, just to the north, about 15 miles of Giga, Texas. But take a look at all of the cyber trucks intermixed within the Model Ys and, of course, the Model Ys themselves. Uh, I don't know what the weekly production rates are for either, but it does seem like they are really producing uh, quite a good number here at Giga Texas. So wouldn't surprise me if Model Ys are close to that 5,000 per week mark that they hit last year. And I think that they're at again, and I'm not sure about the Cybertrucks, but uh, we may still be at that 8 to 10 uh, per hour, which is about uh, 80 to 100 a day. So that would be a weekly rate uh, somewhere around uh, four to 500, maybe a little bit more. The north part of the outbound lot uh, next to this uh, roadway that got some of that asphalt uh, is getting additional trench work in this section where they've done some of the grading uh, and preparation. I think that's going to be for more of the lighting system. Quite a bit of the trenches have already been uh, completed and filled back in, but these are the last sections that are getting that uh, electrical conduit in to support the lighting system. As we get to the north end of the new end of line facility, good view of the new concrete apron on the west side and a track that has been painted into that concrete section. You can see the turnarounds and also uh, some of the lanes. And on the north end, we can see the glass and I'll bring the drone down low. You can get a good view inside these open doors. A lot of the production equipment that red and uh, uh, white items are being installed inside. And I have seen some what look to be like ramps on the south end as well. So uh, with vehicles going in, a lot of the equipment going in, and of course the work here on the asphalt and some of those bollards around those uh, 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 sections on the ground that may be for lighting system, it really looks like the end of line is coming along pretty well. Now the supercharger system appears to maybe be operational considering that there are two cyber trucks here parked in the newly painted line markers and it looks like they're getting supercharged and this also kind of gives us an idea with the arrows that are painted on the ground the direction of the traffic and flow of the vehicles once that uh, uh, comes under complete operation but here's a good view of those cyber trucks the superchargers and the end of the end of line building the next thing that I'm expecting to see at some point will be a canopy system that will be installed over these superchargers. So great to see that amount of progress as well. 
Now on the south end of the outbound lot, the earthwork is continuing to prepare this section, improve the grade, and then this will be paved over and then they will continue to do that marking and finish the lines. Uh, uh, as you can see here, it starts at B13, so that means B12 all the way to one is going to be added. Where the arrow is, is the new washout basin and kind of the perimeter uh, support system to catch all the water that comes off the vehicles and I've seen some vehicles being uh, washed off in that section as well and a good view here of more of those Model Ys and Cybertrucks all lined up on this east side of the outbound lot and uh, one last uh, good look at the uh, new concrete apron with the markings for the testing track on that section of the uh, end of line facility. So that's a great view of what's going on here on the west side. Let's get ready to cross over the highway. We'll resume on the other side uh, and uh, we'll take a look at some of the activity that is going on with the removal of more of the concrete and the old uh, ramp and some of the stairs that uh, were located in this particular area. And here's a good view of how this looks today. Uh, there's still some saw cut areas that look like they could be removed. Of course, that temporary stair going in for those doors and a look inside that open door where the uh, ramp used to be. As we continue to fly to the south along the west side of General Assembly, I will give you a good view of the Model Y end of line facility right now. This is where they exit the factory for the first time. You can see the ramps. You can actually see Model Ys coming out of the factory at a fairly good rate today. Um, and again, I think this is a, a great sign of the production rate uh, for the Model Ys here at Giga Texas. It does seem like they are hitting another level with production, uh, which is uh, always great to see, especially for all the new owners waiting for their Model Ys. Here's a good view of that west uh, main entrance and how it looks today. And that uh, trapezoidal section that has been recently cleaned off looks pretty nice. The New receiving doors that have been added here are still waiting for concrete on that threshold section where the load levelers will be installed. You can see some form work and uh, they'll also need to number these once they are completed. But uh, otherwise, it looks like there is some progress, although slow on these particular new receiving doors. As we continue to fly to the south, uh, we'll take a look at uh, the employees that are getting some uh, breakfast right now with that uh, uh, mobile uh, trailer or mobile van with the uh, food. Here's a good view of the two temporary platforms and all of the steel that uh, has been arrayed here. Some of them are beams, many of them are columns, getting ready to fill in this last triangular section on this southwest corner, connecting more of the two structures together. And here's a good view with some workers so you can get some scale of the size of these uh, steel items. They are quite humongous and, uh, and more of that will be installed here very soon. This part of the building is rapidly coming to a close as far as the steel assembly. Here's another look at the opening, which may be another entrance and that trapezoidal kind of uh, open atrium above that section as well. As we stay at this altitude and come around the southwest corner to the south end, we can see a lot of work with the crews preparing more of the beams for the mounting system for the glass. And more of those uh, columns have been painted black, which will be hiding behind the glass panels when they're installed. We also get a good view of more mud base that was installed on the excavation here behind this doubled perimeter grade beam. Again, look at the worker. This gives you an idea of the size of this grade beam. Uh, it is uh, a lot larger than you might think by just looking at some of the images. Here we see another delivery of the SEDEC glass in that crate and the lifting device, that yellow with the suction cups. And they continue to add at a pretty quick rate more glass on this south end, which is uh, really great to see. Um, also, if you look down into this open crate, there's three plane, panes of glass and that would be about 36,000 pounds of weight in just that one container. So 
Um, I've had viewers ask how many panes of glass are in there, and I think the answer is definitely just three. More of the glass in the crates waiting here for installation, plus some interesting racks uh, on the ground, maybe to hold some of the glass temporarily. In this, this section, we see where the perimeter grade beam has been added and poured with concrete. Another section of the steel structure has been added and is in the process of being added right now by this crane. And that will continue around this southeast corner uh, and then continue towards where the four large tanks are being assembled and eventually enclose this entire section. Speaking of the tanks, this is a good view of how they are progressing. We can also see that uh, some of the pipe work has now been installed along the side of the tanks, plus many of the openings at the bottom for probably some valves and uh, other cleanouts. A good view of the number of cyber trucks waiting here to move to the east calibration lot. This is where they do exit the factory from the cyber truck end of line. And uh, as you can tell, they queue them up in about uh, maybe a dozen to 15 at a time. And then they move them over to the uh, testing calibration lot where they're prepared before they go to the outbound lot on the west side. Here's a good view of all of the footings and the work on the ground level here, waiting for more of that steel to be installed and joining the two structures together. I'll bring the drone up to give you a good uh, bird's eye view of this entire south end. Uh, we'll get into the clouds just a little so you'll note that the uh, kind of haze uh, returns at this altitude. And I will uh, reposition the drone, bring it down as low as I can here so I can keep the uh, visibility as clear as possible. And while I do that, you can get a good sense of all of the glass, the crates, and uh, the other materials waiting here on the southeast corner for their turn to be installed onto the structure. Work continues here at the multi-level parking garage, particularly on the ground on this south side with trenching, concrete vaults, and the conduit, plus that red concrete on top of the conduits is showing that that installation is coming close to being finished, and then we'll see that filled in with dirt. Here's a good view of more of the workers preparing the rebar mesh on another section of the roof, getting ready for concrete to be poured, just like we see on the rest of the roof. Also, if you look at the ground level of the structure on the left, concrete has been poured. And in the second opening, there's formwork and rebar getting ready for more of the concrete. And we see some more of that uh, in other parts of the structure. So concrete is being poured on all seven floors, including the roof and the ground level. As I pull away, it's a good view of the intersection here between Robotic Avenue, which goes to the right, and River Road to the left. And as I pan the drone down, you can see that there has been work with more tree clearing and it looks like maybe getting ready for some excavation work in this particular part of the site and this will eventually be a road that will continue along the Colorado River all the way up to the northeast of the battery cathode plant once it is completed. Here's a good view of more of the materials, some of the blue pipes and the concrete items and more rebar mesh waiting for installation at the multi-level parking garage. We see some double T panels have been uh, brought over on trailers next to the cranes. And we see what looks to be yet another ramp uh, for vehicles uh, being constructed in the middle section of that uh, multi-level parking garage. So I'm gonna now turn back over towards the testing and calibration lot. Uh, and despite some of the mist, it's a good view of the number of Model Ys and Cybertrucks here today and uh, they continue to be uh, pushing them out. I, I, again, I think it's somewhere around uh, eight to 10 an hour for Cybertrucks and uh, Model Ys are more than that. But this gives you a good view here of all of the Cybertrucks that have been recently manufactured and going through their final checkouts uh, on this side. 
And you see some more over at the superchargers, plus some of the Model Y is getting supercharged as well. And then it's a good overall view of the entire lot. More progress with these five new receiving doors on the left and center of the screen. Also, we see that excavation with a mud base has been added now. And that means that they'll probably do some rebar work. Maybe it'll be a small retaining wall in that section. A lot of the castings for Cybertrucks still being uh, stored temporarily here on the outside on the ground, plus more of the receiving doors on the left and waiting for uh, more of the concrete to be poured. Next to these two towers, we can see that excavation work. And this is in that area where conduit electrical wiring uh, connect the main factory to the electrical switch yard. And we see another rebar section for more concrete just to the south of these uh, castings in the rack mounts. More of the rack mounts on this new concrete apron next to the widened berm. Some excavation work going on that berm as well right now and of course the large section that has had all of the concrete cut out and getting those uh, holes and uh, preparation for some of the uh, trench work in that section and trying to avoid the underground installed pipes and other items right now we do see some uh, of those look like rusty poles have been delivered in quite uh, large bundles and we'll see where these are installed and how it will look when they get to that point. But another good view looking down on this open section of the concrete and some of the trench work that is already underway. Good view of all of the castings here on the ground and on the right in some of the rack mounts on that new concrete apron section. And then here are some of the items for the furnace that was installed in the casting machine structure just to the left of the screen. And uh, those look like they are collectors for exhaust ports going up through the roof at some point. Another good look at all of the racks and castings that are here on this northeast side of the casting machine structure. And all of these do appear to be Cybertruck castings, some of them front and some of them rear. Now these crates and also the castings nearby I've had uh, some uh, information that suggests that these might be uh, being put into crates and shipped off as spares for repairs. And that could make a lot of sense considering that uh, there's more and more Cybertrucks being sold. Some of them are going to be needing some repairs and that is possibly what those are for. So I'll continue to monitor and see if that is in fact the case, but that's what uh, I am kind of hearing right now and that does seem to make sense. The work here and the 4680 production section expansion continues. Seen a lot of drywall added uh, here today on deliveries and moved inside. So that would suggest that we're seeing more of the completion of the interior office space and the sections that will make the 4680. So that uh, seems to be a really great sign and keeping them on track for bringing on four more production lines later this year. As we come up to the Megapack site, we get a sense of the activity, which is almost none here next to these trailers in this old uh, material storage yard. Here's a good view of the Megapacks themselves. All of the yellow ribbon that uh, was put around some of the Megapacks a few days ago seems to be removed. And uh, most of the work is here on the north end with these uh, trucks and workers. But uh, I've had a viewer ask if I'll get a close-in view of the electronic system here on the north side. What we're looking for is any of the connections to see if they are open. And it looks to me, based on these images, all the ones here on the south that are labeled A, B, and C are closed, which means that power would be flowing. On the south end of the transformer, we see some more disconnects, but they look like they are all connected here, right in the uh, center of the screen. And then of course on the left, the swivel type double-ended uh, disconnects are also connected. 
So it seems to me like uh, the Mega Packs uh, may have had some maintenance work done, but they are now reconnected back to the grid. And this would allow them to both support Giga Texas in case of power loss and also help support and uh, stabilize the electrical grid for the area. As we go up over the power lines and come down to the old temporary electrical switch shard, this is a good view of some of the trench work uh, that is going on to remove some of the underground items, including possibly the grounding grid that was added here. The three control trailers have not yet been removed, but uh, everything else around here has. And that transformer uh, next to uh, that uh, white and black generator, it looks like it may be soon uh, departing as well. Plus some additional work to finish the disassembly and decommissioning of that uh, electrical switch yard is underway. These are trailers that are used by Tesla, some for security, some for newcomer orientation, and they are using some cyber trucks as part of their security vehicles around the site. As we come up over this four-way intersection, give you a good view of the work to continue to uh, extend Tesla Road on this section of the site to the east. And looking up at the top of the screen, you get a good view of where that will eventually terminate. And it may actually connect to that other road we were talking about earlier on the south end that will follow the Colorado River up to this part. We see more work here on the south side of the dye shop, preparing for most likely asphalt. And uh, on the north, uh, correction, the south end of the cathode plant, the asphalt that we saw being poured on the previous day, it looks like that section is completed. And some of the doors are open. It looks like there's some vehicles and other equipment being loaded inside. Next to the crash testing facility on the south end, there is a lot of work going on here with this uh, concrete tank. We see that yellow moisture barrier, a lot of rebar being put around, and also that gray kind of a liner material. Maybe it's a liner uh, paint, but it has been added into that uh, possibly a water tank. You can see the slope in the ground and also what looks like a drain in a fill port. Uh, that suggests that that will be some sort of water or liquid probably and used for post-test crashing issues in case there were to be a fire. Uh, but that's still somewhat speculation, but that is what it looks like it is developing into. We see all of the work on the water detention pond on the right continues. Most of the items on the left has been cleared out and uh, more paving and flying over the wade pit, which hasn't been used in quite some time. And then here is a good view of the, test, the cell testing and recycling lab that uh, appears to be uh, somewhat operational, if not operational now. Uh, staying low because of the clouds, here's a good view of the north end of the cathode plant, the five receiving doors, and uh, the fact that there's trucks unloading items is a great sign. The lift station still is being powered by that generator, and it looks like additional work is being done by some of the crews. And we see some more preparation work of the ground to the right uh, to extend the paving off to that side of this west side. As we approach in towards the chiller plant, a lot of things are going on today. We see some more trenching in this section here, extending across that concrete uh, drained uh, in the middle of the screen and into the asphalt and over to this uh, prepared or unprepared surface. We see the added scaffolding is supporting what looks to be a rubbish chute now coming from that temporary platform. And then here's a good view of the chiller plant and how it looks today. Most of the work recently was done on the ground floor on the north end. And this is a good view of how that appears. Of course, the fan units are working. So it uh, suggests that uh, this is definitely supporting some level of operation inside. Good view of the north end of the dye shop and that external kiln and furnace that we talked about on my previous video. And as I get down low and give you a closer in view, you can see that there is some sort of maintenance or work being done on it today by that worker in that man lift. On the west side of the dye shop, good view of the continuing work to prepare this section for asphalt and to complete this uh, part of the 
uh, support part of the die shop itself. And of course, at this altitude, I'll give you a, another view of this south end and the work that is continuing to prepare for the asphalt here as well. So that'll bring to a close the flight here today on this Wednesday, the 6th of March. Uh, the clouds uh, haven't really uh, lifted too much, so I'll stay low here and just give you a clearest view as I can of the factory from the north end. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your support, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.